Buongiorno everyone. I'm Alessandro Borga, the Italian specialist at Wilson Daniels. I'm about to connect to Giampiero Bertolini, the CEO of Beyond Di Santi, the historical producer responsible for creating the famed Brunello di Montalcino in the late 19th century. We'll discuss the life of Branco Beyond Di Santi, the fifth generation of the family, and the legendary winemaker who brought the winery to international fame, and the latest release of the iconic Brunello Riserva, now the 2012 vintage, which is also Franco's last vintage before passing away in early 2013. Giampiero is currently safe at his home in Firenze, Florence. Let's call him now. Okay. Buongiorno Giampiero, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Alessandro? I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, look, here, looks like how is the situation is, over there? Oh, the situation is uh, is uh, critical. Let's put it away, but we it seems to get better. So hopefully, in uh, a couple of weeks, a few weeks, we're going to be able to start crawling around a little bit more. So how about okay. how about you? Huh. It's not easy, but it's improving. It's improving, and uh, we are waiting. We are waiting for the better moments. The data are saying that the situation is uh, in improving slowly, but is improving. So let's see what happens. Great. All right. So the topic of today is uh, the Brunello Reserva 2012. And the launch of this wine has been dedicated to the long story life and career of Franco Biondi Santi, as it was the last produced during his lifetime. What specifically about this wine personifies its impact on the cultivation of the Sangiovese Brunello grape and on the Italian fine wine industry as a whole? Ah, that's a great, great question. Uh, as you know, the Reserva has been uh, uh, a milestone in the Italian winemaking, I would say. Um, and it has a huge impact on how to make uh, really the quality wine in Italy because when the family was producing uh, such a quality, most of the other producers were not really thinking about quality wine yet in Italy. So, and the Reserva was uh, representing this, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the, the point of the pyramid for the family or in terms of quality and has been always recognized as the as uh, something special, unique, and very uh, iconic. So it had a huge impact, uh, I wouldn't say, not only for the Brunello category, but I would say for the Italian winemaking. And, uh, and definitely Franco Biondi Santi has been uh, in, uh, in his life, uh, uh, together with his father Tancredi, probably was the driver to in further increase the perception of the value of these wines, of the quality of this wine in the, in the Italian uh, scenario. And he put the Biondi Santi definitely among the most important wines in the world. Um, so that, that's why it's so important for us to, to celebrate the release of this uh, Reserva this year, which uh, as you may know is the last one from Franco, the, the 2012. And, uh, and this definitely represents uh, something very important for us because the, the Reserva 2012 it's, uh, uh, became a sort of message from Franco for us on how the wine should be made to be great wine uh, for the future. He left this, uh, this uh, fantastic product which definitely represents uh, his personality um, and uh, it's a sort of uh, conjunction from the past to the to the future. It's a, it's an important message that uh, that we we have inherited from Franco, and we want to bring uh, ahead with our with our responsibility to to make a better wine in the future. So, in, in the history of Biondi Santi, how many reservoirs have been made, and how many have been made by Franco? This is the 39th Reserva ever produced since the beginning, since the 1881. And, uh, and Franco has produced 24 Reserva. 
So in his era, he's increased the, 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 the frequency of uh, the Reserva, even because he was uh, pioneering uh, some new technique also to increase the quality of the of gridwall. And that, that's why he, he definitely was recognized as one of the most important uh, producers in Italy and not only in Italy. <clears throat> So can you share some significant historical moments for Franco Biondesanti's life? Ah, absolutely, absolutely. Franco had many, many fantastic moments, but I'd like to, to list a few of them. Uh, Franco has been recognized always as a great uh, person in the community of Montalcino, in the family, and obviously at Grippo. So I have a different moment that I'd like to share with you about this. And uh, let me start from, uh, from the family because it was uh, uh, a great grandfather, a great uh, husband. And uh, there is a fact that which is, uh, I believe, very significant in this sense when uh, he was uh, celebrating his 60th anniversary uh, for, for his marriage with, uh, with uh, his wife, uh, Boba. He opened a bottle of 1899. That bottle at that time had uh, 119 years old, and that was also drunk by Tancredi, uh, the, the, the grand uh, uh, nephew of, uh, of him. And Tancredi told me that was a huge experience. So he was so generous to open that bottle that, I mean, we don't have many at that grip, as you may imagine, and uh, that was a great moment. Other moments were related to Grippo. Uh, I mean, one of the most important things he has done, uh, he registered the, the, the BBS 11, the, the clone from Biondi Santi. And that was something in the 1978, which was uh, really visionary at that time, because nobody was doing that at that time. And uh, another important thing that he has done was uh, the request in the mid 90s for the donation in Montalcino, which was never accepted by the government, by the authorities in Italy. But that again was uh, important to show how was ahead uh, versus everyone else uh, in, the, in the cultivation of, uh, of, the, of the vineyard here at, uh, at Vipo. And, uh, and Finally, there was another factor which uh, I like to mention every time. It's the famous tasting of 100 years old bottle, which was organized in 1994 at Grepo. And, uh, and, and the journalist which attended this, uh, this tasting were about uh, 10 journalists from all over the world. And they were astonished to drink a bottle of 1890. Uh, nine, which was uh, uh, really a fantastic bottle, still very good, and uh, one of them gave 100 points to this bottle. So that was really something unique for Italy, because in Italy nobody has never organized such a kind uh, of uh, tasting with such uh, old bottle. I can stay one hour here listing many more, but that, that's what I believe it's uh, significant for him. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the BBS 11. Uh, can you please uh, explain a little further what this project was from uh, Franco? Yeah, the BBS 11 is, uh, is uh, Brunello Biondi Santi 11, which is a clone that was, uh, as I say, registered by Franco. But the story of this uh, registration is back in the years with uh, the Franco's father Tancredi, which did uh, a muscle uh, uh, selection uh, in the, I believe, mid 50s. And this muscle selection, who started in that time, was, uh, was finalized by Franco, applying a more scientific and structural proce process to, to the selection of the clone which he did uh, in, uh, starting in 1970, when he took over the responsibility as a winemaker at Grippo. And uh, it lasted eight years. And finally, in 1978, he was able to select one clone, which came out of 40 different clones that were studied in, uh, in, uh, at Grippo. And uh, that was the clone on the row in the vineyard, which was the number 11. That's why it's called PBS 11. And today, most of the vineyards at Greppo are uh, planted with, uh, with this clone because it's 
particularly suitable for our environment there. I see. And so what qualifies these grapes to be used in the Beyond the Santi Brunello Reserva? Uh, that's a nice question. Uh, Franco has always had a very simple rule to relate uh, the reserva to the older vineyard that we, we have a grape for, those who are older than 25 years old. Uh, and also the last reserva, this one here, the 2012 was done with, with this rule. Um, and uh, I believe this is uh, something which has been good and, uh, and we inherited huge reservas in terms of quality with this rule. But in the future, we may have a different, partially different approach because uh, we will study more and more the soil in a way that we will use the most suitable grape for the profile that we want to have for the reserva, which are not necessarily uh, vineyard which are older than 25 years old. I see, I see. So let's uh, dive in a little bit more about Tenuta Greppo estate. What are the kind of soil that you find in this place and what are what makes them so special and different for the cultivation of uh, the Sangiovese grape? Well Tenuta Greppo has uh, not just one soil in one area, but we have four different areas, which means uh, heterogeneity, means different soils, and uh, different altitude as well, which means again different soils. At Greppo, we may have, uh, you may find a uh, clay schist and uh, sandstones, which are basically called galestro, and uh, in the in the higher part of the of the of the vineyard, and in the lower part of the estate, we can find. Uh, clay marn and limestones and uh, which deliver different kind of, uh, of wine. So the combination of these together with the soil and the altitude, with, sorry, soil, altitude and exposure provide very nice condition to obtain the best from Sangiovese. San as you know, it's uh, Brunello, it's all Sangiovese, it's 100% Sangiovese. Uh, but despite that, we blend our reserva and our Brunello as well from different areas. So um, what makes really special this area and especially the reserva, I would say, is the fact that uh, in uh, uh, the altitude combined with the, the galestro provide really freshness, provide uh, longevity and the structure to our wine. And this is something which is uh, quite unique in the location of our vineyard at Grippo. I see. So you mentioned that uh, Reserva may change the approach in the future. Is there any, what are the projects that are going on right now to be on the Santi that you want to share? Well, Alessandro, there is a very important project now at Grippo, which is the we call it the parcelization project. Basically, is uh, the target of this project is to, to know more and more about our soil. We have a philosophy at Great Pot that says that we want to respect as much as we can what we get from the vineyard. And uh, so um, this means to know much more what we have in every single spot in the vineyard, which is something that uh, Franco Biondisanti knew by himself because he had the, 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 the sensitivity and the, the, the experience to have everything in his mind, but we have to, to apply a different approach. So we started a huge project last year where we did uh, 33 different big uh, uh, pits in the, in the vineyard to study each pits and to study the different layer of the soil in each, uh, in each vineyard. This will deliver uh, very important data that provide a technical team with more information to blend and to obtain higher quality for, for the future. So basically we will have more ingredients to make a good wine, a better wine in the future. And this also applies uh, mostly to Reserva, but always also to our uh, regular Brunello and uh, also to the Rosso di Montalcino. It's an important study that will last uh, uh, about three different harvests at least. And uh, 
we just done the first one and we believe that we will get a much higher quality in the future for this wine. So if I understand well, it's utilizing the data that you're, you're going to get from the study, uh, trying to put on paper all the, the knowledge that Franco had is in his mind and uh, now put them on paper and uh, make sure to make a wine that is going to be great also now and in the future uh, yeah. without Franco and uh, also use as much uh, knowledge that you can to even make it more precise, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Sure. Yeah. All right. So yeah. that we have a good understanding now of what Brunello Reserva means to Italian wine, uh, to Brunello di Montalcino and to Beyond the Sant in particular. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about the 2012 vintage, which is the one we are uh, now releasing to the US market. Starting yeah. from the special label that you have on the label, on the, on the bottle. Yeah, let's start from the label because uh, as you can see here, the label report a small strip that says dedicated to Franco Biondi Santi. This is something very soft, but uh, I would say elegant, and is very much in line with what uh, the personality of Franco was. And we wanted to respect that, and we wanted to dedicate this to this uh, fantastic person of the winemaking in Italy. And, um, and also we will have uh, this scholar explaining uh, uh, the, 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 the life of Franco and what has done and what is this reserva meaning for, for, for us. Uh, but that's, I mean, is the, the, the formal thing. Let's talk about the wine. The wine has been uh, uh, released now in March and it was supposed to be released last year. But um, one year and a half ago, we decided with the technical team that the wine was not ready. And we decided to follow the philosophy of Franco, which, uh, which always says that the wine should follow the rhythm of the nature. And, uh, and for us it was very important in, with this wine because one year and a half ago, it wasn't ready yet to be released. He was not really blended the way we want him to be, to be blended now. And uh, uh, all the components now are perfectly balanced and uh, it's ready to drink. Um, so this, uh, this wine, uh, this vintage was a little bit warmer than, uh, than 11. But despite that, this wine has a incredible freshness. Uh, the fruit is really evident and the structure is impressive. All is that is uh, it's uh, uh, it's surrounded by the tannins which uh, last year weren't like now, now. Believe me, I tasted this wine every single month last year, and we saw a very nice evolution of the tannins, and now are very rounded and very very good for also for giving longevity to this wine. But the wine is already pleasant and drinkable with, uh, with a very nice. Uh, uh, profile uh, at this stage. <clears throat> and and let's, let's remember that the, the main trait of Beyond the Santi Brunellos are this acidity, this freshness that keeps the wine alive for many years to come. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wine that has, mostly for the Reserva, has a really long lifetime. And uh, he, me personally, had the pleasure of tasting some very old vintages of Brunello Reserva and the yeah. freshness, the liveliness of these wines was exceptional, even after 40, 50, 60 years. Incredible. Yeah. No, you're perfectly right, because um, recently we did a tasting with the first vintage of Franco, which was uh, 1971, side by side with this vintage here. And uh, if you look at the color of the two, there is not a huge difference that says that there is uh, 41 years in the middle. It's something astonishing. And we strongly believe that this reserva, for the way it came out, uh, will could last really more than 50 years. It's uh, it's really a, has a huge potential to la to 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 stay there for many many years. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Zampiero. This was a great conversation and very educational. The Brunello Reserva 2012 is now av available across the United States 
at a very limited availability. Uh, if you have an interest, please reach out to us at Wilson Daniels and we'll let you know which restaurants and retailers are carrying it. So, Zampiero, thanks again and uh, to next time. Thank you, Alessandro. Thank you very much and have a good uh, drink here. <laughs>